Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take a stacked astrophotography image of Andromeda and in just seven steps, process it to bring out the detail. You don't need any paid software or any kind of fancy AI tools. You can download the data for free from my GitHub page. It's just simple, minimal processing that will help you get a nice image. This video is aimed at those who are starting out in astrophotography, but I think there might be useful information for anyone. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. So I've got Cyril opened, and I'm assuming that you already know how to stack an astrophotography image. So you take multiple images and then stack them. If you don't, I've got a video on how you can stack subframes. But for now, we're going to assume that you already have your stacked image and you just want to process it using very simple steps to get the most out of what you've worked on. So I've got Cyril open. Cyril is a great piece of software that's dedicated to processing astrophotography images. We'll also be using GIMP. GIMP is a free Photoshop clone that's very powerful. These two programs are going to be able to help bring the most out of your image. So let's go ahead and open up the image that we want. Click open up here, this button, and then find the image on your computer. Now what's going to pop up is your astrophotography image in its just raw state. It's nothing has been done to it. All of the data are there. It's just waiting to be brought out with the software. A very quick way to see the data is to go down to here to this button, click this button that says linear and then change it from linear to auto stretch. Now we can do better than this auto stretch. So we're just using this so we can see what we're doing as we process it. This auto stretch has not actually been applied to the image. It's just us previewing what the image could look like. And it's just there so we can see what we're doing. So step number one is to crop the image. So take your cursor, left click somewhere where there's no funky stacking artifacts. So all this green magenta and all of this yucky stuff up in this corner here, those are all stacking artifacts. We want to get rid of that. We want to crop that out. Take your cursor, click where there's no stacking artifacts and then drag it to what we want to keep. Zoom in and start to exclude what we don't want to keep. So when the cursor changes to these arrows, then you can click on it and and change the selection. Once we've gotten the selection that we want, right click, click crop and then crop. And then all of that stuff will be cropped out and it'll be no longer part of our image. Step number two is to do background extraction. So when you're taking an image like Andromeda in broadband and in true color, light pollution and, may, and possibly the moon are going to create gradients along your image that aren't part of your deep sky object. So this part is darker, this part is lighter. We want this to be uniform. So let's go to image processing, background extraction, and make sure that RBF is selected. RBF is a very powerful non AI tool, meaning it's not a neural network. And then what we need to do is create sample points around the image. Make sure that add dither is checked. We create sample points around the image. You don't need a lot of sample points, just enough to where it can get a good representation of what the light pollution looks like in your image. Making sure that you don't click on the galaxy. If you do click on the galaxy, you can right click to move it. Once we've got 10 or 15 spread around the image, we can click compute background and already all those a lot of those gradients are gone. Very powerful tool. Let's go ahead and click apply to save those changes. Next step we want to do is deconvolution. So let's go to image processing. Filters and then deconvolution. Now what deconvolution is going to do is help sharpen the image. So the first thing we want to do is generate a point spread function. A point spread function tells Cyril how the image is blurred. So we do, click on PSF from stars generate PSF, make sure that the PSF size is big enough to make a good representation of what your stars look like, plus some background. We got to figure out how sharp we want to make the image. That's basically controlled by this parameter here that says iterations. The more iterations you have, the sharper the image will be. The fewer iterations you have, the less sharp. I editor me from the future here. In the original video, I should have mentioned that you want to be using Richardson Lucy 
deconvolution along with gradient descent as the algorithm method. Otherwise, otherwise 80 iterations is going to be way too much. Gradient descent gives us better control and it's better overall. I know that for this image, 80 is 80 iterations is pretty good. So I'm going to click on 80 and then click apply. OK, I just ran that. It'll take a few minutes. Let's just zoom in. Just check to see if there are any ringing artifacts around the stars. I don't see it. It's not too bad. We could click on this undo button to see what it was like before. And after. And if we zoom in, we can see that the stars are getting a little bit tighter. So this is before. And this is after. Looks pretty good to me. If things are too sharp, again, you press the undo button, decrease the iterations. If it's not sharp enough, press the undo button and increase the iterations. It's really that simple. It does take a few minutes to run the deconvolution. So if instead of deconvolving the whole image, you just want to deconvolve part of the image, zoom in into the galaxy, left click and drag to make a selection and then right click. Select ROI and set ROI to selection. And then instead of applying the deconvolution to the whole image, you can just apply it to the ROI preview. When you're done and you're happy with the amount of iterations you have, then just do right click, ROI and clear ROI. OK, so deconvolution is done. Step four is we want to color calibrate the image. Now, for this image, there's a lot of green noise in the image, which is not very good. Stars are generally not supposed to be green. So let's go to image processing and then we will go to remove green noise. Click apply and suddenly all of that green around the stars is gone. Nice. Let's go ahead and close this. Now, the image after removing the green noise is actually pretty well color calibrated. But if you find that it's not, if it's still too green or red or blue or whatever, then you can go to image processing, color calibration, then click on color calibration. Zoom in to part of the background of the image, one part of the image that doesn't have any galaxies, stars or nebula in it and select it. Click on use current selection and then do background neutralization. And that's all you need to do. After that, you can close out this dialog box. All right. This looks pretty good by itself, but I think we can stretch this a little bit better. So instead of using Cyril's default auto stretch, let's turn this back to linear. And we'll go to image processing stretches and let's do first the arc sign transformation. It's going to warn us that some of these values may be clipped. So let's go ahead and rescale the values and then increase this stretch factor in the arc sign transformation tab. Hi, editor me again. I just want to point out that in the original video, I stretched this way too fast. So you probably don't want to go all the way up all at once. You might may want to do an iterative step. So maybe go like 100, 200 and click apply. You can also change the black point here as you stretch. But generally I like to mess with the black point after I've done the inverse hyperbolic stretch transformation because you can see the histogram better and know when you are making the picture too dark. Now what this is doing is it's stretching the image in a way that helps preserve more of the color. So we'll go and click apply. And now the image is way too bright. So we need to do a normal stretch on it, not an arc sign stretch. So let's go to image processing, stretches, and then histogram transformation. You can see that the, the peak of the histogram is way towards the right here. We want to bring that back towards the left to make it dark again. So let's take this dark slider here and move it this way all the way until the histogram is on the left. Let's go ahead and click apply. If you're just starting out, you could go straight into a generalized hyperbolic stretch or removing the stars and then stretching things and then putting the stars back in. But I want this to be a really simple tutorial, something that's really easy for beginners to do. And as you progress in the hobby, you'll be able to cherry pick more advanced techniques that you prefer and add them into your images. So for this, all I'm going to do is just click this button here that performs the auto stretch onto the image. It'll automatically stretch your image and it does an OK job. Let's go ahead and click apply. Now, one of the things about the auto stretch in Cyril, it's too aggressive for my taste. 
So I'm going to take this middle slider and just move it back to the right a little bit. And by doing that, it helps darken out the background and make sure that we're not overstretching things. Click apply and there we go. It's already looking like a nice image, except there's a little bit of color in the background and a lot of little bit of gradients in the background that we probably want to get rid of. So let's go ahead and bring this into GIMP. And for step seven, we'll fix the background. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll click on this arrow button to download it. I'm just going to download it as a TIFF file because TIFF files are more easy for GIMP to work with than FITS files. GIMP can do FITS, but it can be kind of buggy sometimes. We're just going to call it LRGB stretched. TIFF. And I'm going to save it into a 32 bit floating point image. OK, now that I've got GIMP open, I'm going to go ahead and open up the file that I just created in Cyril and a dialog box will pop open about sort of the color space. Just keep is fine. And we've got our image opened up in GIMP. And what we want to do is clean up the background. And so the easiest way to do this is to convert this to lab space and then use the L channel in the lab space as the luminance. And I'll, I'll just show you what I mean with the image selected here. Let's go to colors, components and decompose. A dialog box will pop up. And it'll ask us how we want to extract the colors. Now, the default is probably RGB, but we're going to go to lab and then click OK. What's going to happen is another tab is going to pop up in GIMP. And it's going to have the luminance information separated from the color information. The color information is actually in two channels, the A channel and the B channel. The B channel is your blue and yellow colors, while the A channel is your red and green colors. Let's go ahead and take this B channel, deselect the L channel here, make it invisible. Take this A channel. We're going to go to filters, blur, Gaussian blur, and then we're going to zoom in to make sure that we're actually blurring things. We can go to split view and we can see that it's a very noisy. This is going to be color noise. Once we blur it, it goes away. So we'll click OK, and then we'll do the same thing with our B channel. So select our B channel deselect the A channel so it's not visible. And we can do Control F to do the same filter on this. So Control F and then this is blurred. This will help get rid of the color noise as well. One small trick that we, we might want to do is to stretch just the luminance channel just a little bit more. Why we're doing this now in GIMP is that it's not going to be stretching the color data, which could introduce noise that can be really distracting. So let's go to colors and then levels. And then we can take this midpoint slider, move it up a little bit, take this black point slider, move that down. And that looks that looks a little bit nicer than it did before. This is the after this is the before the background just a little bit darker. The galaxy pops a little bit more. Now we go to colors, components and recompose. And what that's going to do now take the lab data and put it back into that first tab. So let's click on this first tab up here. And we can look at the before and after. So this is after we cleaned up the image a little bit. And this is before. After. Before after. And now the background is a little bit darker. The galaxy pops a little bit more. It looks a little bit nicer. So there's still a lot of background noise. So like if we zoom in very far, you can see that there's a little, it's a little bit splotchy. There's a lot of blue in the background, a lot of yellow in the background. It's not very even. So zoom back out. What we're going to do, go back to this lab tab, take the L layer, press control C if you're on Windows to copy it or command C on Mac. Go back to our original tab and control V to paste that layer on top of this layer. Now, we've got the luminance data here and we've got this color data underneath it. Let's reorder this layer. Click the L copy that we just had and move it down underneath the LRGB data. Now select the color layer. We're going to select this RGB image and change its mode from normal to LCH color. It's going to tell GIMP that the RGB layer is where the color information is. And this L layer is where most of the data is. So we can actually just rename this as the color layer. And this as the luminance layer. If we zoom in. 
we can see that there's still some color noise. So we can click on this color layer, go to colors levels and take this midpoint slider here and take it to the right. And as we take it to the right, the image is going to be desaturated. If we take it all the way to the right, only the brightest parts of the image will have color. So let's let's move it back until we start to see no color in the background. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We can turn on split view to see the before and after. So let's zoom in in the split view. This is after and this is before. You can see that there's a lot of color noise in the background in this one, and there's not a lot of color noise in the background of this one. And just like that, in seven easy steps, we have a very nice image. And all we have to do now is export this as whatever type of image we want, whether it's a PNG, a JPEG, another TIFF file, and it just looks nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I wanted to make something that was very accessible for beginners to do that doesn't involve a lot of very complex steps. I generally find that if you have a lot of data, so you have, so for example, I have 15 hours of total exposure time for this Andromeda image, that you can do very simple processing and get a very good image without needing a lot of fancy algorithms. And if you are new to astrophotography and you want to know how to stack subframes, I've got a video on that too using Cyril and Cyrillic. Thanks for watching.